the Gabbard 2020. What does it mean? Welcome back, Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com, C E R N O V I C H. I got a Partagus. No, what do we have? Yeah, we have a Partagus. Number two. Very generous gift here from a friend of mine. We got a Partagus number two. See that Shauna has joined the Periscope. How are you doing, Shauna? I hope you had a lovely day at the um, the car dealership. Hope it was lovely since you did technically interview. Or, uh, not interview, but you did technically interrupt my my wonderful um, my wonderful streams earlier. Tulsi. Tulsi Gabbard. Did I spell the name right? Tulsi Gabbard 2020. Yeah, T. Wells. That's right. They're calling her a Saz mouthpiece. The, the attack's already on her because she's an anti-war anti-war Democrat. So now, you know, you're, we're, we're, we're seeing now the, the battle lines are drawn, by the way. Partagus number two. I have some audio bleed coming out from somewhere, which is actually quite interesting. I'm not, not exactly sure why that is, but I find it interesting what's going on here. We're just relaxed, right? Tulsi Gabbard. So I think it's fascinating because you find out what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So Tulsi is being called the Assad mouthpiece. Here we go. Mark Caputo. I think he's political Miami. Assad's mouthpiece in Washington. RNC welcomes Tulsi Gabbard to the presidential race with a moniker. Moniker. That many liberals probably agree with as well. So if you do not want war in the Middle East, you're, you're a Assad apologist. There was actually an article written about me where they called me a Assad apologist. I was like, what, do you, what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with with you people. They just really, they just really like war. Yeah, I got a part of this number two here. I don't know what year it is, but I'm sure it's quite good. Now, so Tulsi Gabbard to me makes the 2020 race interesting. Elizabeth Warren, she gets steamrolled. By the way, we have the accoutrements here. We'll clip the cigar. We have a torpedo, which little cigar trivia. If you're ever wondering what kind of cigar to buy, always buy a torpedo because it takes the most skilled rollers to roll torpedoes. So generally speaking, the torpedo cigars will be the finest cigar in a line. So if you have, if you want Partagas or H. Upman, Padron, not always, but as a rule, as a rule, as a rule, you will always get the best torpedo. Wayne Dupree's here. Everybody's here. We're just hanging out, guys. We're just relaxing on this fine. Kathy's here, the editor of Hoax Book. I don't smoke out here often, guys. Had to turn, had to turn the smoke alarm off, and I lost my only match, a double whammy. So we're gonna have protein smoothie. You want more protein smoothie? Protein smoothie. And my daughter wants a protein smoothie. I'm telling you, this is Friday night. We're having another child too in two weeks. We're about to introduce a new layer of chaos. Go, go ask, go ask, go ask for protein smoothie. Okay. I'll get you one. We are introducing a new level of chaos into this household with a second daughter. So I've told people, if you have a chance to come to an event, if you have a chance to meet me, hang out with me, you better do it now. I'll be right back, guys. I'll be right back. I promise. Talk amongst yourselves. Come on, protein smoothie. Let's get you protein smoothie, okay?
protein spoon or no? No protein spoon? Okay, come here. Come on. You want a protein spoon or no? All right, I'm back. Welcome to Dad Life. So I always tell people, I always tell people, I always tell people, get your life's work done early. Having kids is amazing. It's amazing. But it's very hard, it's very hard to do your really deep work that you can do as you're younger. So my belief as a man who got the gray beard, silverback look, my view as a man who has done it all, and I love having kids. If you're a man, wait. Trolls are out, trolls are out every day. I'm used to that. That's not even a... The troll, it's not even interesting to me, the trolls. It's sort of boring. They come in, same thing. They've, they've run out of talking points. I'm sorry, trolls. People, oh, Assad. Back to this. So they are all attacking Tulsi Gabbard because she is an anti-war Democrat. So she will find out that you can do a lot of things in America, but you cannot be anti-war. You cannot be anti-war. You just, you can't. If you're anti-war, they will go after you so fast and attack you so hard. Here's, here's, here's Michael Tracy, for example. Tulsi Gabbard defended Assad in the same way that people who sought a diplomatic resolution defended Saddam. Yeah, that's just the usual smears, bros. If you're, if you, it's just the usual smears, guys. You're used to it by now. Unless you support the, the war machine and you want to bomb people in the Middle East, you're not welcome in the Democrat Party. What do you guys want to talk about today? Open mic night. Consider open mic night. Somebody says they have six kids. Yeah. Yeah, six is a lot. No, um, no, thank you. Six is too many for me. I think three would be too many for me. Well, not too many, but three would be sort of, that's enough. Two, I think is great. Three will be, I think two will be fine. Three is going to be, three is going to be different kind of work. So what do you guys want? You guys tell me, man. You guys tell me what you want to talk about. I'll take your calls. You guys want to take some calls? I got to trim the cigar. Usually, another cigar tip is if you have a good Cuban cigar, you should let it rest for about eight hours before you light it. Otherwise, it gets a little, it's a little harder to draw. I'm teaching you advanced cigar. cigar photography. A lot of people are angry at me. A lot of people are angry. They hate Tulsi. Send you my movie on DVD. I don't have it yet. At least not on DVD. We'll be doing a DVD run, though. Um, we will definitely be doing a 
a DVD run shortly. What what else do you guys want to talk about? What kind of cigar is this? Or a shirt? 1901. I think it got it from Nordstrom. Probably Nordstrom. Can I smile in my house? Yes, smiles are not banned in my house. What's the best case for New York for America? Um, the best case for America is forward on culture, culturally cultural liberalism, fiscal conservatism. But we'll never have it. We'll never have. We will never have both. Somebody says I need to draw a poker for my cigar. No, I don't. I don't need to draw a draw poker for. Um, I don't need to draw a poker for my cigar, guys. What I do need is another book of matches. Joseph says he has a box of Cubans. Okay. DM me. DM me. And we'll um, yep, DM me and we will. We'll talk more about that. I'd, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to hear about it. Hold on, guys. So what do you think about Tulsi Gabbard? What do you all think? About Tulsi Gabbard. Tell me your answer. Yes or no. Will I take any criticism? Um, not from you. Um, if, I, if I want criticism. Then I have elite people. That I can talk to for criticism. Right. That's where people go. Oh you're afraid of criticism. No 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 no. But if I want criticism. I can go to elite people for criticism. I don't need to hear complaints. What people offer me is not criticism. It is complaints. It is whining. It is all, all, all you offer. Complaints. No, I do not accept complaints. If I want criticism, I will tap into my network of people and I will get complaints from or criticism from then. Right? That's the way it is. That's the rules. No, I'm not interested. I'm not as interested in, in criticisms. Some people are claiming that they're interviewing Q right now on a different channel. No, I will not sm smoke a cigar full of weed. No, no, I will not smoke. I don't smoke weed and you don't inhale cigars. So it's a different, by the way, I'm having a cigar night, Southern California. I'm looking extra cute. I need to take a selfie right now, guys. Hold on. By the way, if you want to complain about me, I don't care. I told you this is a Friday night cigar night. So I'm just going to be douchey. If you don't like it. You don't have to watch. You gotta find the right lighting. You gotta find the right angle, you know. Well, you got good lighting, guys. You gotta you gotta take them selfies. Store them up for social media. My collar's not really showing. So this outfit is a good outfit. I've worn it a couple times. It's a good outfit. The problem is getting the collar. Getting the collar here. Right. You gotta have the right amount of shirt collar balanced with the right amount of jacket. See, you want it to hold kind of like this, but without the collars flopping over. It's a very hard look to pull off, especially sitting down. It's a tough look to pull off, but you want to show your shirt collar on the neck, but you don't want it to fold over like a 1970s look. This is complicated stuff, N nailing it just right. Your husband loves cigars, Monte Cristo, Pyramid Humidor. That's a good humidor. Yeah, so I'm just not quite able to get it I'm just not able, just not quite able to, to get it. But you know what? That's fine. We'll live. We're not trying to, we're not trying to win anything tonight. Not trying to win a beauty contest here tonight. Well, I always am. 
It ain't easy being the, there's a lot, of, a lot of pressure on me. And then when I go live on Instagram, I look kind of shot weird because there's too much headspace. So by the way, if you're on Instagram, you can see I have too much headspace and I don't like it. I'm not happy about it, but it's the technical, it's the technical setup we have. I have a great, I have a great Japanese whiskey. I have a great Japanese whiskey that I'm going to drink maybe tonight, maybe tonight. I don't know, but I have a wonderful, a wonderful Japanese whiskey. Hello, Instagram. How are you? How are y'all doing? The Instagram crowd is coming in. We're, so if you're on Instagram tuning in, we're just hanging out. This is a cigar night, virtual cigar night. I'm having a real life cigar night on the 16th, which is this Wednesday. Oh crap. Okay. I need to remind people that this Wednesday we're having a cigar night and we're just hanging out right now. I'm drinking a Zevia. So go ahead. Give me your questions. What do you want to know? Ask me anything. Hey, am I still paying college debt? A uh, good question. I'm, I'm still paying my law school student loans because my law school student loans are 3.3%. So when I got, this is, you know, aging me, but when I got my loans, you could consolidate them and I could consolidate them at 3.3%. So I've been paying the interest only on my law school loans for like, oh, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, because the market has done so well that I would be losing money if I paid off my loans. Here's what I mean. Let's just say hypothetically I owed hundred thousand in student loans. That isn't that isn't the number, but let's just say it. And let's say hypothetically, well not hypothetically, my interest rate is three point three percent. So I'm paying essentially thirty six hundred bucks a month in interest. But if the market has been having gains of ten percent, then I'm losing out on sixty five hundred to seventy thousand a month or seventy or seven thousand a month by paying off the loans because the Delta is so big and because the markets have done so well that why would I take money and pay down low interest debt rather than just pay the interest on it forever. So I'm interest only on my, that's advanced. That's bad advice, by the way, for most people. So for most people, that's terrible advice. Pay off your loans. Um, if you're a little bit more advanced, there are ways to, to play games with debt and there's a, a smarter way and a less smart way to do it. Yeah, can you believe it? When I went to law school, the the Stafford loans were 3.6%. The private loans, the Sally May loans, I think Sally May has a new name now. The Sally May loans were like 6%, something like that. So yeah, my law stu my highest interest law school loan was 9%. I paid that off right away. And then I paid off my 6% law school loans. And then I kept, I kept, I probably had a hundred thousand student loan debt, 110,000. Look, I would have to, I would have to find the exact numbers, but I probably had, I had six figures of student loan debt, so, but I paid off all the higher interest ones. And then the, the 3.3, I'll just keep those forever. You don't, you don't pay down the principal on low interest debt because there's an opportunity cost every dollar you spend. But again, that's more advanced. Most people just pay off your loans, pay your debt down. Yeah, Trump's attorney general, Bill Barr, is best friends with Mueller. So all of you Trump people are going to be crying, eh, I can't believe Bill Barr. Bill Barr won't shut down Mueller. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows this, but Trump's going to hire the guy. And then the Trump supporters are going to be crying about him three months from now. Do you know how moronic that is? Right? Do you really know how... Oh yeah, student loan debt now, 100,000 is easy. Most people now, if they go to law school, they're gonna hit a couple hundred thousand in debt. I, the, the tuition has gone up so much that it's like actually incomprehensible. When I hear what people are, law, law school tuition alone at most private universities is like 50, 60,000. It's a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money. 
So yeah, people are, it's a bad investment too, by the way. I tell people don't go to law school. Nobody listens. The, 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 the story of my life is that. The story of my life is that. People just don't listen. People have to learn on themselves. But here's the issue. $200,000 is a pretty big exception to the rule. Right? If you want to say, you know what, I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to grind. I think I can be an NFL pro athlete. And you fail. Well, you wasted a couple of years of your life. But you got the story. You can start over. When I tell people, I go, do not go to law school. Do not go to law school. Unless your parents are paying for it, do not go to law school. Well, I don't know. I think I'll be the exception who loves being a lawyer and make a ton of money. Dude, that's like a $250,000 gamble. Do you know how much money and interest that is? At 10%, and that's what's typical now, that's 25 grand a month in student loan interest. Oh, and by the way, after you borrow that first year, they don't make you pay it back for the first two years, but that interest capitalizes. So if you borrow, you know, 100000 in first year law school, well, you, you still have to pay interest on that. It just gets folded back into the principal, and then you graduate, and they hand you this, the financial aid exit. Here's your moment of truth as a lawyer, and, and you have to live it to appreciate it. I've seen people leave the financial aid office crying. Because I worked in the library, the law library, I worked right across the street from the financial aid office. I would see people leave the law crying. They're like, I owe $250,000? How? Crying. So you need to make a payment of two grand a month just to pay the interest on those kind of loans. That's 24 grand a year. You got to make 40 grand before taxes just to pay that off. That's just your student loan debt, right? So if you really think you're the exception to the rule, pick something where you can fail and not have this albatross of debt for the rest of your life. I have seen people cry leaving the financial aid office. So I tell people, don't go to law school. Please don't do it. Please don't go to law school. They go anyway. I don't know what to tell you guys. I give people good advice. But every, so the issue, and this is an issue that you have to, this is great mindset advice here, by the way. You, if you don't believe you're an exception, you won't take any risk. But if you play a rigged game, the consequence of not being an exception is lifelong and dire risk. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So, yeah, like Will, Will says, if you need loans, you better go to Harvard and Yale. That's true. Will's right. So if you need loans, you better go to Harvard, Yale, or even Georgetown Great School, University of Chicago. But as Will will tell you, there's a lot of kids at Harvard wish they'd never gone. So then what they do is they go work in these big law firms three, four, five years, and then they're doing something not law-related. You can count those stories countless. Oh, yeah, I went to work at a job I hated. It's like, okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. You get into Harvard, you're feeling like a big shot, right? And go, then you go, well, I don't like being a lawyer. So you graduate law school, say 25. Graduate law school, 25. You got to work four years at a big law firm to pay, just to pay the debt down and kind of live a life. Now you're 29 or 30, you're starting over. And well, I'm glad you're starting over in your life. But what if you just started on your passion when you were 23, right? That's how you have to think about it. I know so many people like, oh yeah, I went to Harvard, hated it, worked in big law four or five years, lost four or five years of their lives. And like, oh, then I paid, paid down my loans. And now I'm, you know, good. I was like, well, great. You're 30 years old, man. You could have been doing what you want to do, 22. This is an issue that people have. It is so cheap, especially if you're a man, it is so cheap to live when you're in your early 20s. So cheap. You can live four or five guys in an apartment. 
and you can go to the gym and you can read books and you can live in LA in an apartment like that for 12, 1400 a month because you just live four or five guys in a place and you can go to the gym and you can read books and you can do that for a year or two. And then you can say, oh man, I still want to go to law school. It'll st law school will still be there. College will still be there. Graduate school will be there. It isn't going anywhere. But then maybe you're like, oh, I kind of like, you know, just being a vagabond and reading books and kind of finding myself. Go find yourself when you don't have any student loan debt. Finding yourself is something you do when you don't owe anybody money. But once you owe money or once you're like me and you have adult obligations, children, you don't get like, I can't just be like, like in 2015, I lived all over the world. 2015, I lived in 15 different countries. Not lived there, but visited 15 I lived in two. I lived in Vietnam and Paris. How many people in their lives can ever say that I lived in Paris? Mike Cernovich can. I can't do that now, right? Because I got children. And by the way, I love having children, so I'm not saying don't have children. I'm just explaining to you the journey that I've taken and what I've learned. So once you have big boy obligations like a large debt load family, you don't get to just say, you know what, I, this year in 2000, I'd like to live in, I'd like to live in Vietnam and then I think we'll live in Paris. I'm going to go visit all Europe, go hang, visit Thailand, hang out. With, you just can't do that anymore. It's just life. And most people who could have done that are far close from doing it because of the decisions they made in their early 20s. In their early 20s, they made decisions that they'll never be able to do that maybe until they're 60. Right? So don't, don't burden yourself down with big boy or big girl obligations. Until you know, the issue with women, and I hate to break it to you, but there's a biological, biological considerations. So for women, if you want to have children, you got to kind of figure that out in your like mid to late 20s. I wish it weren't true. I don't like it. I don't think it's good for anybody. But biology doesn't care about your feelings. Biology doesn't care about what I wish were true about the world. So if you're a woman, your timeline is different. If you're a man, big problem. Will said he went to Georgetown because he didn't need it. Yeah, so Will was in a different position. So I'm giving rules, and there are exceptions to the rules. So if you happen to, have, you know, you got a little lucky and your parents did okay in life, and your parents like, oh, sure, you know, go, go to law school, then it's great, it's fun, because you don't have to get out and, and freak out about that debt. In which case, you go to law school, you learn a lot, you make connections, you'll meet people who are going to be future senators and congressmen and congresswomen and presidents and all that. Great, 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 great. But you can't let the exception thinking apply to the rules. You have to think about the general rules that apply. And then you have to say, if you believe you're an exception to the rule, you better have a, an exceptional argument. Everybody, this is just natural. Everybody thinks they're top 10%. Everybody is just believe that. That's fine. You, you do want to believe in yourself. But if you're going to enter a game that has real consequences, real economic and financial and time consequences, you better have a good argument why you're actually top 10%. Not just why well, I believe in myself. And believing in yourself is not enough. And I wrote a book on believing in yourself. I wrote one of the best books of all time on believing in yourself, Grill Mindset. So the guy who wrote the book on why you have to believe in yourself it's telling you believing yourself is not enough, right? So I literally make my living telling people that you need to believe in yourself more because that's the problem. Most people do not believe in themselves enough. So you got to believe in yourself. But believing in yourself is not enough. And if you believe in yourself to a degree that's delusional, that can actually be a benefit. Because then when you get knocked down, you're like, well, I mean, I'm the amazing people just don't know how great I am yet. Go live in that delusional world for a while. That's fantastic. But if you're making economic decisions about that or you're making family decisions about that, oh yeah, I'm the person I'm in a relationship with is a bad person, but I can change that person. No, no, no. You're not going to be the one person in a million who's able to change the person you're with. You're just not. You're just not. Unless you, because if you were, you would already be living an exceptional life and you wouldn't need to change someone. Because I can tell you from firsthand experience, if you are truly living an exceptional life, the people you date will change for you. You don't have to make them change. They will change to be with you. It'll be unconscious and it'll unfold and they will just change. 
because you're such an exceptional for force of nature. Why do I look so fancy? I had a journalistic interview earlier. So I interviewed the guy behind the Build the Wall project. So, I, you know, I got to pay him a amount of respect. And, you, you know, if you're, if you're doing fancy interviews, you got to you gotta dress a little fancy. By the way, this is a good look. You don't see very many men try to look like I do. There's a lesson there. You should, you should care about how you look. Listen, so when I want to look good, I look good. Don't think that just because I usually wear gym clothes, that's my only dimension. I have more dimensions. I have more dimensions than that. And everybody, everybody should have. Everybody should have more dimensions than that. So there you go. There's your life advice with Cerno. There's your Cerno pep talk. You have to believe in yourself to an almost delusional degree. If you have to err in one direction, err on the side of having a delusional belief in your own success. If you must err. And as humans, we will always err until we find the lines. And then the reality will give you a check. So if you must err in one direction, err in the direction of having a delusional belief in yourself. However, do not allow this delusional belief in yourself lead you to make long-term economic decisions such as assuming student loan debt, going to law school. There you go. If the culture people are watching, go clip that. So if you're, if you're culture and you're watching that clip, call that Mike Cernovich tells you why you should never go to law school. That'll be a good clip. That clip will get a lot of views. So clip that. Mike Cernovich tells you never go to law school. You could also title it earlier on in the clip. You could also tell you why you should believe in yourself, but that would be another good clip. You could go to an earlier segment and say why you should believe in yourself, even to the point of having a delusional sense of self-confidence. But dot, dot, dot. I'm reading Instagram. Beard is looking strong. Thank you very much. Glad you enjoy the beard game. Courtney, Courtney wants me to keep up the live Instagram lives. So I will keep it up, Courtney, for you. I usually delete the Instagram lives, but for Courtney, I will keep it up. Um, my beard game is strong. Thank you. Yeah, we're going into a different, different year, you know, growing the beard out, different new year, new look, new, new year, new, new, new feeling. Call it what you will. I'm not going to grow it out too much. I like it. Oh, I like a well-kept beard because I have just the right amount of gray. I'm in a good phase in terms of my level of handsomeness. I'm in a good phase and I'll tell you why. I look like an older man, but not too old. See? So people can tell oh, there's a man in his 30s or 40s. There's an older man, but I don't look too old. This is right now a very good face to me. And I'll be in it for a couple more years. So I'm, I'm leaving it like this. And then maybe when I'm like 45, I'll color my hair or something like that. But right now, I really like my look. It's a very distinguished look. I look genteel. I look older. But I don't look, but I don't look old. So I'm pretty happy. All right, Instagram, I'll leave this video up for you. All right. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let the Instagram people, I'm going to leave that up for a minute. All right, my friends. Thank you for watching. Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com. I usually delete the Cigar Night videos. So if you enjoyed the Cigar Night video, thank you. But I will probably be deleting it. Because I, like I like to have a little, a little something extra for the OGs. Cernovich.com.